Hey everybody, what's going on? Tony here, and we're going to be talking about streaming, the basics and a little bit more, so check us out, because we're going to be talking about it. Alright, real quick before we jump in, I want to give you a quick little outline, but before I even do that, I want to make sure that you guys know to put it in your calendars. In 2021, DJ Expo will be back. So make sure you check us out, put in your calendar. It will be August 9th through the 12th. Back in AC, back at the Hard Rock. I know it's going to be off the chain because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff that we didn't get to do this year round. So we'll make up for it next year. So make sure you guys make your way to AC and we'll definitely see you there. All right? Good deal. Now that that's over, <laughs> let's jump into it real quick. This video is going to be a little bit long. I kind of have it broken into two parts. Part one, which is the one we're talking about right now, is going to be covering my basic home studio setup for streaming and how I can transition it to remote streaming. I'm going to keep that part short because we talk about in part two of this video, uh, bring in a good friend, a good talent, a very accomplished in a DJ that has done streaming for a very long time and I'm glad I can call him a friend and a colleague and he gives a lot of really cool insight and we kind of went a little bit long on that but some good information there so we're that's part two this is going to be part one and we're going to keep it really really short so on that note let me jump in so I set up my streaming system to kind of do two things I got it set up so I can do stuff at my home studio and I can broadcast from here and you know put put the music and the stream out but I also wanted the ability to take the system if you will remotely because I have had situations I've had three already that people wanted to do a live stream and of course they were like well how do we do this without bringing my home computer in and stuff like that so I've been able to transition and actually incorporate and build out the system to do both, if you will. So let's start with the home one. Both systems, if you will, the, the home and the remote are actually powered by the brains of the operation, which is a uh, Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. I did a, a little bit, a good amount, I should say that a little bit, a good amount of, of research. I know I wanted a very flexible, pretty powerful, if you will, switcher and it definitely does that i don't want to get in the part one i don't want to get too much into the into the ins and outs and the uh, machinations if you will of the features there are uh, some really good videos on youtube about the actual features of the atm mini pro i encourage you to check those out brief overview it has four hdmi ends and they are pretty much auto detectable. So no matter what kind of input I feed it, it will take it. It does have a USB-C out port on it, which apparently you can use two ways. You can use it as a capture device. And that's how I plan on using it. I have an external drive that I hook up via USB-C so I can record the actual session. And then the other one is you can actually connect the switcher through USB-C to your laptop, home computer, what have you, and then that computer detects the switcher as an external camera, basically. So I've not done that yet, but regardless, that's how it's kind of laid out. I do connect the switcher via an RJ45 network port to a switch, which goes to the internet, and I'll, I'll cover that a little bit later, but that's pretty much the brains of the operation. It allows me to switch uh, while I'm here home, up to four cameras and I usually do kind of a left right overhead and head on kind of thing when I either use my turntables or a controller or whatever to show the mixing and so forth and so on some of the features that I, I can talk about that I know it can do it it can actually have graphics if you interface the mini pro with a computer I have an interface with a laptop um, there is software that allows you to kind of interface and interconnect with the ATM Pro and it does some really really cool things you can store graphics that you can use as lower thirds as overlays as buttons whatever you want to call them 
So it's really, really powerful. Um, I know you can use the, the ATM as a standalone switch, but it really, when you combine it with a laptop, it really opens up a lot of, a lot of possibilities, a lot of doors for you. And, and that's how I, I, I kind of have it set up. So I can, like I said, incorporate graphics, incorporate lower thirds, overlays, all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much really the basic home setup uh, regarding cameras. Personally, I use GoPros, and I know they're old, <laughs> but I use actually GoPro Hero 3s. I actually tripped across them. Oh my God, I don't even know how old they are, but I've had GoPro 3s now for, oh, I don't know, let's call it, I don't even know, let's just call it a good six, maybe even eight years. Um, I know they're older tech, but I have found with that platform, there's some really cool accessories that work really well for how I kind of want to capture stuff. One of the biggest things that GoPro 3 actually has is a, a power supply. I don't have to run batteries on it. I can actually use a little power supply and hook it up to, to wall power so I can shoot for as long as the uh, memory card can hold. And that can be up to four hours, I think. On I think those only max out the 64 gig, is that right? Omega gig, yeah, I think it's gig. So and I want to say I can get four, four and a half hours on there. So yeah, it's great. I mean, you're not going to get four and a half hours on a battery. So um, I'm able to utilize those cameras really, really well. I like the way they look. They're super cheap. I got them off eBay. I don't think I've paid more than probably 60 bucks for a GoPro. And they've done really, really well for me. I will say the only negative thing about the GoPro 3 is in low light scenarios, they're really not that great. So like if you're doing nightclub stuff or you know stuff where it's really kind of dark and you want to feature a DJ or a performer or your crowd, as long as you have some ambient light, you know, they, they do work okay. They tend to be a little grainy. Um, they do shoot at 1080, which is, I think, okay. I mean, I know there's YouTube guys that shoot at 4k and i know you compress it later but for what i'm doing i've i've really been able to i think to maximize the the quality and, and the investment using gopro 3s so in the home i set up like i said four cameras before and uh yeah that's pretty much it for the cameras on the audio side i wanted to keep it really really simple i am an audio guy by nature but i just didn't want to invest if you will too much gear get dedicated toward the the whole streaming thing because at this point i just really didn't want to go crazy overboard but I, I did want something decent i tripped across a shore mixer which i thoroughly love it has the ability to give me mic level output line level output which is really really great and i believe it actually does have a phantom power on it as well because i use uh, AKG 414 mic as my broadcast mic if you will and that requires phantom power so it's been really nice having having that mixer I got it off eBay <laughs> I'm a big proponent for used gear I really didn't pay that much for it it came rack mount in a 2RU rackier thing and it's really clean I really like it it's the preamps on it are really nice so it doesn't color it too much it passes the audio really simple through I did one event without any extra processing. You'll see in the rack, I have a DBX215 EQ in there. I literally had the thing laying around and I'm glad I kind of rediscovered it and found it. I put it back in the rack. So I do have an EQ now when I do future ones and it gives me just a little bit more tone control. And the first event I did with just the Shure Mixer, it went good, but I did have, have a little feedback regarding the, uh, the audio playback and it was just a little a little thin it didn't have that low end punch that I, you know obviously you're playing dance music you want to have that that low end punch so i put the eq in line and it it helped a lot i was able to boost up the lows a little bit and not get it distorted so for me that was a a great little workaround that i literally had laying around and kind of made a made a made a rack out of it and that worked out really well so yeah, that's pretty much the home studio setup. 
So to translate that into the remote locations when I go in the field, really all I really did was add some HDMI extenders and I decided to add a couple switchers. So how I incorporated that was the, a a the HDMI switchers are Extrons. They're actually, the model number is the uh, uh, 201. And what it enables me to do, I wanna say it's up to 200 feet. I can actually be in a remote location. And if I'm in a ballroom or a multi-purpose room, what have you, and I gotta have a camera 75, 80, 100 feet away, it's not a problem. I can connect it with a transmitter and a receiver, and I do it through Cat6 cables, and it works out really, really well. I can get GoPros where I kind of want, get them tight, get them wide. So I use extenders to, to get me far out there because I want to say past about 7, 10 feet, you're not going to get an HDMI signal from a GoPro further out. It just, the signal drops. It harkens back to my AV... Um, installation days I, I i think even back then we kept 20 feet and i found that you don't want to have a cable longer than 20 feet i found out with the gopros it's about 10 after that it just drops it just gives you no signal so i try to keep if i'm doing stuff in the studio i keep my hdmi runs coming right off the camera to the uh, black magic atm about 7 10 feet if i gotta go further than that i employ the hdmi extenders the other piece of equipment that I incorporated into the setup is an additional HDMI switcher on top of the Blackmagic ATM. So what I do is, since I have four legs, if you will, coming off the ATM, I have two Extron SW6 HDMI switchers. So they enable me to have six sources come in, one out. So what I do is I put one of, the, one of each Extron switcher on one of the four legs, two, <laughs> on the ATM. So that really opens me up to, instead of having four sources to choose from, when I incorporate the two Extron switches, I literally now have 14. This is how I usually I set it up. My, my leg one is just one source. My leg two will be one switcher, which is six on there. My leg three is another six on there. So that's 13. And the fourth, I keep open as well for just whatever. It's usually, I've been finding out if clients ask for extra graphics or something at the last minute, I can actually have an extra source. So that's pretty much how I have it laid out. And it really opens me up to a lot of different capabilities. So instead, again, instead of just having a four a switcher that just gives me four legs to switch from, I can have the potential of the 13, 14 cameras or whatever sources that I can I can come through. So yeah, I, I did a benefit uh, conversation take. I want to say it was uh, Labor Day, and I think I ended up using nine, eight, eight or nine cameras, and uh, it was really easy. Once I, you know, I, I, you do have to do a lot of planning and know what cameras on what switch on the on the one by six and so forth and so on and how you, you kind of have to plan ahead on how you want to switch things. But once I got that figured out, it was really cool because I got to do some really cool long shots, long uh, short shots, uh, left, right, stage kind of thing. That was on a band. I had a host shot. I had to shoot a, a bartender. And the there was a DJ involved. So I think I had two cameras dedicated to them. So yeah, I had multiple cameras. And once I got them laid out and set up with the with the look I want, it, it ended up being straight. It was really, really cool to be able to have that many cameras and have them work in conjunction. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the hardware. In closing, I do want to add that when you do streaming, you want to make sure that your internet connection is as robust and as stable as possible. I cannot emphasize that enough. At home, it's easy for me because I really don't have a lot of devices connected. I do not do Wi-Fi. When I stream from the house, I actually have a tethered connection and I actually use, and there is a picture of it in that rack. I have a five port gigabit switch. I think it's a Netgear. And I actually use it to connect the ATM, I use it to connect 
my laptop that connects to the ATM and that's done through the switch and I usually have a third laptop that I run tethered and that's like my monitor laptop. I mean in theory I could use all that stuff in, on Wi-Fi when I go to a remote location but I'm not certain how robust that connection is. I don't know how they have it firewalled. I don't know how they have it integrated into their system. And let's face it, when you're streaming, you're pushing a lot of bandwidth. You're pushing a lot of information in real time. So you want to have as strong of a, of a connection and as big of a pipeline, if you will, as you can. The Labor Day event that I talked about, I was able to actually to connect directly to their router. So that worked out really, really well. So yeah, I cannot emphasize enough to make sure that whether you do one at the house or you do you know, remote ones for weddings or corporate events, social events that are remote locations, please be, be diligent and be on point with your internet connection or, or the, the accessibility to your internet connection because without that, you're in trouble. <laughs> you don't want your uh, stream to be choppy and you don't want it to actually crap out because you're on the client's Wi-Fi and they're like, oh yeah, it works great. And then all of a sudden 40 people show up and they jump on the Wi-Fi too and then you're in trouble. All right, so there it is. That's the part one. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got a good part two for you. And we just talk about how streaming is uh, important and just different aspects of the streaming environment, if you will. So thanks again. Stay tuned. Remember, AC in 2021 in August. And we'll see you in part two. And we'll see you in AC. See you in part two. So, yes. All right. So, so all right. we introduce ourselves first? Sure, sure. All right. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> hi. This is the part two <laughs> video of uh, DJ Expo, DJ Times 2020. I guess the the virtual version. Um, we're here with my man Dave, aka Duke. What's up, guys? Aka Crazy RVA DJ. <laughs> glad to glad to know him and uh, be be with him. As this project or this seminar developed, I kept thinking about how to incorporate, you know, streaming stuff, and I realized I had an asset, <laughs> and I was like, well, why don't I just call Dave? I'm an asset. And you are definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely asset. absolutely. So yeah, I uh, obviously Dave's done streaming events, which we will talk about later. His approach is a little different th than mine. We went over my setup in the earlier part of, of the video. His setup's a little different, but at the end of the day, it's still streaming. So uh, yeah, let's just jump in there. So what are you using in your studio kind of scenario to get your little DJ world out there to the peeps? Uh, so for here in this is actually my bedroom guys. So like this is this is the crazy part This is just my bedroom and it's clean. It's clean. Yeah, <laughs> I know yeah, tell my mother that. I will tell my mother. <laughs> Mom, um, So what I have is so right here. This is this entire wall Just my backdrop. Obviously, I've got my records. I've got other miscellaneous tchotchkes uh, Things like that the whole room itself is actually acoustically treated um, The only thing that's not treated is this wall directly behind me, but I've got a panel over there I've got a panel over there there there. I got you know 16 of these things around here. I Utilize a two PC streaming setup one of the PCs. I know if you're a Mac guy. I'm sorry it's all good. One of the PCs is purpose-built just for streaming and it's got a black magic capture card uh, built in where I can take either SDI or HDMI input. Uh, if you're not familiar with SDI, that's a higher, more pro level of uh, video that sends video and audio, just like HDMI, but it's it's a little bit different how it how it works. It looks like a F pin like cable style it's cable. It's a BNC, right? BNC, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, British Naval connector, but that's a whole other story <laughs> behind that. Um, so I've got that. I've got a Focusrite Scarlet to capture the audio, and that goes USB A to B into the PC itself. A couple of KRK monitors. I've got a Mackie mixer, and typically, actually, at this very table, I've got my two 1200s, uh, DJM 900 Nexus 2, machine, laptop, laptop stand. You know, it's pretty simple. I utilize actually three different cameras for streaming different things. So if it's just a typical Zoom meeting, I'll use a, a regular webcam, whether it be a Logitech C920, a C720, even a Logitech Brio. Brio is a great camera. All of them are good cameras. This, the C720 only runs 
obviously 720, the C920 will do full 1080, the Brio. So I use that if I'm just sitting at my desk, if I'm just having a Zoom meeting with someone talking like you know yourself or Big Daddy or you know Jim Tremaine, uh, shout out Jim. For the setup I run right here, often I just typically take a mic stand and put a GoPro Hero 5 or Hero 7 uh, on top of it. What it allows me to do is use the wide angle from it so I can be above, shoot down, see my machines, see the mixer, see the two turntables, see the, the time code records. It shows all of that. It still gets a nice tight angle, but we're in my bedroom right now, so it allows it to not take up a huge footprint and because of the lens on a GoPro, it allows me to be able to shoot, get 4K, 1080, 60 FPS, no issue. I also use a Sony Handycam for certain things. So, yeah, I use the Handycam right there. It's actually sitting on top of a file cabinet directly in front of us right now. I'll use that for other shots. Sometimes I've actually had it right behind me for, if you remember the, sh the stream I did yep. for DJIS, where yep. I had a multiple camera angle setup where both of them were in the stream at the same time. One was a shot for the decks and one was the shot directly on me. So you can see all of the different things within there. So it's acoustically treated. I've got audio going in through a sound card. I've got video going in through a video capture card, whether that be uh, an Elgato Camlink 4K, I've used a couple of those, or even you know the Blackmagic that's actually built in to my computer. Like it's on the, it's what, PCIe? Yeah, that sounds right. Yep. PCIE. Yeah, the, the bus. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a computer guy like that. <laughs> so it goes in straight onto the motherboard. So I'll use, utilize a, a couple of those, and then I'll just have just regular microphone, like corded Sennheiser, like I use for DJing. I'll just use that on a mic stand for myself. Now, I take all of that information, whether it's the audio, the video, all of that, mix that together, and then I'll use that in OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. It is a free software. It is, I, I cannot say better things about it. Anything you can do with a TriCaster, you can do within OBS. Now you have to set every single lower third. You have to set every effect. You have to set everything. It's all based on what you can do. So I'll utilize OBS. There do overlays, different graphics, a little bug in the corner with my logo. You can also green screen with it. And often I've taken a, just a, a green piece of cloth. I got a Joanne fabric for, I don't even know what, $6 a yard or yeah. whatever it may be. I'll utilize that. And you know, I can green screen behind me and I can be anywhere in the world you want. Now, with green screen, you need lighting. You need light on the green screen because you need that green screen to look as bright as humanly possible. So you don't see any wrinkles in the green screen, things like that, which will then distort your image. Then you also need a light on yourself because if you just have that backlit, no one can see you, and then you start getting all these like fuzzy things within your green screen. Right. To take it a step further, I've also figured out a way to be able to even green screen my records. Now this sounds crazy. All it really is, is I use a clear tractor time code record. Yeah, I'm a tractor guy. <laughs> all right, you know, trying to put, put, put the hate in the comments. <laughs> you know, see, the thing is, I paid for tractor and it's still working, just like you paid for Scratch Live, exactly. and that's still working. That's so, you know, until, you, until I got to pay for me. something new, all right, all right. <laughs> that's true. Um, it's, it's a little different. But right? I took literally leftover green screen, or not even, it's not green screen, fabric, just green fabric, and just cut a circle, put the clear time code record on top of that light from above and then i green screen my records yeah it was i have to, I have to tell you it was we'll, we'll, it, we'll cut to cut the video it was it was pretty on. dope i mean when when you told me about the concept i was like damn it why didn't i think of that and dude yeah the, the execution of it was pretty dope now was, to, so. to the part where that changes a little bit is by being a tractor guy we cannot there there's never been a green tractor record ever released so with Serato, guys, you can buy green time code records. Yeah, I think there are green ones, yeah. yeah there's plenty yeah, of them. There's like yeah. six different ones. There's yeah. even a Z-Trip edition one. Um, tractor guys don't have that. So I had to use a clear record. I even thought about painting the bottom of I it you talking about to, uh, it, yeah. to make that happen. But I was like, before I just destroy an entire side of a time code record, let's try the fabric first. It worked. I mean, it and, was, it, and it worked. It was amazing. And it was literally done with scrap material. And I needed new time code records anyway, so, you know. Screw it. Nice. All right. It was dope. 
So I utilize those different things and I've got the screens on my computer so I can watch the stream while I'm doing it. And then I can take my cell phone, watch chat from something and just take a wireless mouse and go click, 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 change scenes. Now, if I had something like uh, uh, a macro, Control right, 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 right. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've but between uh, yeah. scenes, things right, like that, that would right. make life a lot easier. Right. So yeah, that's kind of my streaming setup. I mean, it's it's mobile, but it's not really. It's kind of all built into my bedroom. Cables are tucked, things are gaffed down. Right. But I'm able to execute as if it's a regular studio. In many cases, I've been called by someone like, "Hey, can you stream X Y Z in an hour?" And all I gotta do is turn on my laptop, turn on the streaming PC, couple of lights, if I want to, if it's daylight, I'll just open the window right next to us. And then I'm ready to go. That's it. And the difference on sometimes getting a gig versus not getting a gig, is how ready and able are you to jump when they say jump? Absolutely. Because if you can't, someone else is gonna get that gig. Absolutely. You know, just like with mobile DJing. Someone calls you about a wedding, and you don't pick up and you wait until office hours the next day to listen to your voicemail on your answering machine, well, someone else already got that gig. Yep. So, yeah, that's kind of my streaming stuff. Did I miss anything? No, I think, I mean, you, you covered it and actually in great detail. Huh? So, um, so, yeah, so now you guys have a great idea of what a maybe a typical studio setup like mine is and then transitioning that to a remote setup where and what that is and then now you hear what another DJ has that setup is obviously different than mine and the end result is yeah we're, we're all streaming but obviously because you have the setup you have mm -hmm. you can incorporate a lot of different elements that I I just haven't yet or I just haven't done um, because you know again you got the green screen you got OBS you've got you know I know with with like I said with 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 my hardware I've got the the, the, the Blackmagic ATM Mini Pro, and there's a lot of onboard stuff that I can emulate what you do. Mm -hmm. Haven't figured it out. <laughs> so the but, ATM, the ATM but, that you have, it's got a lot of you know smarts right, uh, right. to it, and a lot of stuff. But you gotta, it's just like learning OBS sure. or learning you know learning. If I was to learn Serato, I gotta learn where all the sure. new hot cues are. I gotta sure. learn the file management software. There is a learning curve to it. Absolutely, it doesn't matter I, what yeah, you're doing. It's really. true. It's true. I mean, we we we. We all do, and you know, I, I know since this pandemic thing started, and uh, you know, we, we we go back to February, March when the lockdown happened, and I know there was a huge push. I mean, it was just amazing. April, May, you know, everybody and their mother, sky is blue, grass is green. You were streaming, you know. I mean, it, it, it was just the flavor. I think honestly, on the surface of it, so yeah, let's let's kind of segue. You know, we're, we're, we've we've talked about the gear. We talked about the different approaches to it, it, if you will. So let's segue into now that we got it. What are we doing with it? Mm. Touching back on how things were really blowing up back in April and May, and you know there was just this everyone huge, was streaming. Everybody I mean, on, was streaming. on Facebook, right? Right. And let's right. be all right. So let's let's talk about that for a second. There were a lot of good streams. And there were a lot of bad streams. And when I say bad streams, that's not anything to directly like attack anyone. But if you're just running, let's say, some EV top in in your room, and it's not acoustically treated, it's just real echoey, and just you're just using your cell phone at a poor camera angle that doesn't really show what you're doing on your decks, or it doesn't say if someone wants to tip you, how they can tip you, or your name. There's no overlay. There's nothing to interact with people. You're just hearing. You're using your, you know, your Android self, S yeah. S7 as a as your main. Camera. So the audio is going to be <laughs> and the video is going to be and eh, and there's nothing to it. And you're running then vertical video on top of that right. instead of you know, right. you know you're right uh, sideways you know I, 1920 I, by 1080. You know it, it's funny that you bring that up. That actually brings up a a, a, a point if you will. Mm -hmm. And shout out to uh, Frank Frank Garcia. Yeah, in, shout out in, Frank in, in Queens in Mainline. Please you know check him out. To that point. He launched a kind of service where he had his own video server, if you will. Because again, and I, we don't want to delve down this rabbit hole too much of the, the, the legal, legalities and the semantics of how to stream and whatnot. Suffice it to say, <laughs> Frank kind of figured it out. 
And not only did he figure it out, but he opened up his channel, if you will, for other DJs to submit content and he would host it and show it. And I want to say it's DJs for Hunger. DJs for Hunger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So please check it out. And not even me self serving. DJs Against Hunger. I think it was DJs Against Hunger. Sorry, Frank. Yeah, sorry, Frank. Call Frank. He loves the Call East. Frank. Seriously. Frank, mainline yeah, sound. Exactly. Give him a call. Exactly. He actually picks up the phone. <laughs> so, but. Well, what do you want? Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. No, Frank's a great guy. No, he is. He is. But, you know, the, the point is, is that he, he opened up his, his, his platform. And because of that, and I'm not saying this, you know, to pat myself on the back, but I, I did help him out a lot in getting all this content that DJs were submitting. And I actually had to change a lot of it to the standard that his platform could broadcast on. Point being, I got to see a lot of content. <laughs> I got to see a lot of DJs mix and play, and I'm telling you, it ran the gambit from, and again, not calling anybody out, but it did run the gambit from, yeah, this is okay, and this is kind of what you're doing. Again, you know, the whole mm -hmm. cell phone, you got the whole letterbox the wrong way thing going to, like, holy cow, this guy got Spielberg to produce his thing, and it's just like, this is insane. Well, that, that actually know. brings up a, a really good point, and this is not to yank my own chain by any means. You've seen a lot of those, those cell phone video where they're recording the audio just bouncing around the room. Sure. And if you're a beginner, I understand to a degree, but there's so many tools. You could NDI your phone and then plug in your mixer even then into your phone so you're getting line in audio. There are a lot of things you can do, even for free, that will allow you to be able to put out better content. Don't just think, all right, cool, I got to stream, I got to do this. I just press, boom, Facebook Live, all right, go live. It's not that simple. You, know, you can do that, but people will notice what your stream is. And you can have eh video with good audio, but you can't have great video with terrible audio. My DJ's Vault stream. I had a multicam set up and it looked great on our end. Yeah. You know, I don't know what happened between sure. us and, and Twitch, but that's right. not the point. People stayed in that stream because the audio was good. Exactly. The video was eh. Actually, the video was 90% of it pretty terrible. Uh, you uh, know, we had the multicam thing, I mean, but I don't know. I what, thought it was pretty cool, but it, you know. it, whatever happened on Twitch. Right, exactly. You know? Exactly. But because the audio was good, people stayed. Now, if it was vice versa and we had 4K video, and the mix just sounded blown out, too much gain, and you know, underwater, and no lows, no one would have stayed, period. So there's something to be said Absolutely. Uh, about that. And there are tools out there, there's so much information, and so much information for free. Every, literally every single thing I know about streaming, I learned from a YouTube video. YouTube, YouTube's free, you got it on your phone. There's no excuse, the information's out there. And it's, don't even listen to the information that like other DJs are telling you, look at what professional gamers are doing. Because when it comes to streaming anything from like your home, whether it be on Twitch, Facebook, any other streaming platform, the pro gamers have been doing it for years before we came along and true. decided we want to use this. I mean, that's what Twitch really was. It I mean, started off that uh, way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't even think I'm that crazy savvy. I try to keep up with you. And, <laughs> I, I knew about Twitch, but I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. It was a, a platform for gamers, mm -hmm. you know. And and I, I found it very interesting, you know, from a, from a social society culture aspect of how and why Twitch became what it is now. I mean, obviously their core is still gaming. You know? Yeah, they they haven't. Yeah, we don't they, have all yeah. the candles. Yeah, it, it, exactly, exactly. But it it, it is funny how. Necessity is the motherhood of, of invention and how Twitch has taken this tangent curve and it's become a, a platform and some mm -hmm. even say savior, if you will, of DJs trying to be creative. So yeah, on, 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 on that note, let's, let's talk about how DJs can use streaming. Should DJs even stream? I mean, you know, we're, we're at a point right now where like i said the peak was say april may maybe even june but now we're bumping up against november and so it's it's been a while but we've all been in lockdown in some capacity or other 
So let's. You know, I, I know you and I have had, have, have had yeah. this, this 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 conversation. Two times. Exactly. So so yeah. Let's let's uh, let's embellish on the the sheer fact of should should we be streaming as as DJs? Should should we be streaming? Oh, are you like pitching this to me? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So and, and take this with a grain of salt. All right. Should you be streaming as a DJ? Absolutely, you should be streaming. Now, if you don't have something worth streaming, you should not be streaming. So if you can't mix and you can't put on a show and most of your DJing is weddings, let's say, and typically you play a song and last four bars you mix out into another song or you just, just offbeat mix, no one is going to stand there or watch your feed of you, you know, standing there and me even making announcements. Like, no one's going to want to watch your fake bridal party intro on Twitch. That's, it's, that's not going to sell. Now, let's say you're just playing like that guy that played polkas. Right. And it was local polkas. Right. Stream looked good. Video looked good. Audio was good. It was music. I've never heard. You never heard. Right. Yeah. So it was something I... different. There was a reason to watch that. Now, it's, that's a very small demographic of people that want right. to hear just polkas from Illinois, but there's a demographic for it. So let's say any genre of music that you may be really into, let's say it's 1970s country, and you know everything about 1970s country, and you can talk about the music and you can bring different tracks in and out and do something cool with it, or like even talk about where something was sampled from, that's where your money is. But if you just wanted to take the DJ Intelligence Top 200 and play the Cupid Shuffle on a stream, that's not gonna happen. Now, with streaming, you know, going further, let's say maybe wedding ceremony. If, you're, if you are able to stream, let's say you've got a good signal, a couple of cameras, you can be able to capture audio, that is something you can sell. Now, going back to your DJ career, the more you stream the, and the more of a following you gain, the more people are going to notice you that are potential clients. Now, when it comes to people saying like, well, you know, I charged... Three thousand dollars for a wedding, and I'm gonna—you want me to do a stream for four hours for free? Well, first you don't have to do for four hours. Take an hour at a time, maybe take two hours at a time. A lot of it, like what the setup I have here in my room, it's ready to go almost at all times. I actually had to move my turntable so we could be here right, right now doing mm -hmm. this because I had a stream yesterday. The more people that see you, all of those are potential clients. All of those are potential clients that could be booking you or flying you somewhere across the country. This isn't you going to your bridal show in Connecticut, hoping you pick up one, two, maybe three brides. You got the entire internet of the entire world, China, maybe not, <laughs> to see you that are potentially booking you. So for club guys, you know, guys ourselves, there could be a whole group of people in Chicago that see us and that are now following us that are like, yo, when this quarantine stuff ends and castles open again you yeah. know book tony because like we've been following tony tony's a beast and there are a lot of guys out there that are not only doing that but are living that and if your stream is good you've got good video you've got good audio good good music you're, you're performing at a higher level absolutely i i i think that's where it starts if you will and if not, mm -hmm. if not stops is the performance value of it my opinion of it is, as I said, Dave and I have had this conversation several times over the past few months, where whether you think streaming is valuable or not, you think it's a waste of time, you think there, there's a whole gambit out there of the, the, the perception of it, good and bad. On the bad side, it's like, you know, again, it's a waste of time, it's useless, why am I going to watch a dude or a dudette? for an hour, all they're doing is pushing buttons or dancing around, I don't see the point of it. Whereas the, the pendulum swings to the other side where the positive side is, you get to maybe listen to a DJ you never heard before or one you do know and see them in, in an environment that you might not normally get to. Yeah. But the point really, I think the, the real important point, if you will, when, when you take a step back is mm the performance value and it and where where I kind of see try to see I think we all do at this point because we've been doing this crap which is not much you know for the past 8 months is 
what's going to happen six months from now, a year from now? Let me tell you, today, driving into work, I've been hearing for the past, say, two months, and, and again, p point of order, let's be real. <laughs> Unfortunately, the environment or the industry that we're in, the entertainment industry, whether you're a wedding guy, nightclub guy, DJ, whatever, you know, that industry, we're going to be the last ones on the field, man. It sucks, but that's the reality that we're in. You know, there's going to be a lot of fallout, obviously, sadly. But if you're going to stick to it, it's a whole new world out there. Mm -hmm. It is a whole new world. And you have to do you have to be doing something to stay relevant. Absolutely. Get something where people remember you, create open even new doors. Absolutely. And here's the thing. If streaming's good enough for Marshmallow, or streaming's good enough for Paul McCartney, or honestly most of the biggest names in music sure. in general, right. Dropkick Murphy's was one of the first out the gate on St. Patrick's Day to do a multi-cam, full production stream. And they did it on Facebook in front of 100,000 people. Wow. Now, I don't know about you, but if I could do a stream from my bedroom and get noticed by 100,000 people, I think that's a little bit more than a wedding show. Exactly. And, and I started to say, like I said, the past couple months, I've been hearing on the radio, what have you, through my news feed of how we're not going to get back to normal till maybe second, third quarter of 2021. Today, I heard people say that now they're pushing it to first quarter of 2022. So we're talking about a year, let's just say a year and a half out from where we are today that we're not potentially, we collectively as DJs are not going to be able to do what we did eight months ago. To be in front of a, of a real crowd and play the music that we do, read the crowd, blah, 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 whether it's a wedding, corporate, nightclub, it doesn't matter. So if, if that's the reality that we have to potentially face, I think we have to reassess. I think we really have to look at the potential of streaming and look at it from a self-serving standpoint. Where even if you think it's silly and it's self-serving and it's useless... You know, okay, I'll, I'll meet you a third of the way, but like Dave touched on, if you're not out there, you're not out there. Yeah, people are forgetting you. And, and here's another thing. Don't look at what, if you do a stream, what you're doing for other people, but look at what it can do for you. Not ask what, you know, you can do it's for true. your country, but or not it's ask what your country can right. do for you, but what you can do for your country. The exact same thing. And streaming i got luckily i got into streaming a few years ago and started learning the right. ins and outs and obs and some of the cameras and how all of that works but i noticed by doing i was doing a radio show on public radio where you ain't making no money and at vcu exactly and but we did a streaming show of the radio show now this was before a lot of the dcma issues with facebook and copyright now we would still get flagged but Companies were coming to me, Dave, you want to do this opening set? That got paid. You want tickets to this? Then I can network my ass off. You know, excuse me. Big Daddy told me not to swear, <laughs> but you know, whatever, F that. Which then opens up other doors for me. Someone I might do a remix for, a collaboration track with, record scratches for their song. All of that opens up doors. Look at Gary Vaynerchuk's jab, jab, right hook. Give them something, give them something, ask for something. Do a handful of streams, do maybe a couple of sticker giveaways, something like that. Then ask on a stream, be like, yo, if you know, if you're liking what you're doing, you know, hit that donation button, drop a tip, whatever. Or when someone does something like that, thank them. It creates such a community and opens up so many doors, but you have to be able to be willing and able to put yourself out there. And then when you decide you want to get in the ring with Ali and you see everyone else that's boxing, you got to see if you can box. It's a reality of it. Yeah, it is. I, I, again, whether you like it or not, I do think streaming is going to be part of the DJ landscape in the short term for the next year. I mean, I mean it's, it's a live TV show you can right, do from your bedroom. Right, right. People in the 50s would have dreamed about this type of ability. To be able to stick a, a camera, a couple of cables, an extra PC, and a GoPro, and a backpack, set it up almost anywhere, and be able to do a live broadcast over a wire that someone can see on a thing in their pocket? Yeah, it, you're Come right. On. I mean, you're right. When you, when, when you look at it through, through that prism, yeah, I mean, 
It is amazing, literally. And it evens the you playing can be, field. Yeah, I mean, you can be... No, you're, you're 100% right, because you sit here and look at the streams that are being put on by DJs out there through Roger S, Todd Terry, Iridus Elba. Um, Z-Trip, Marshmallow. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you got EDM guys, you got house guys. All these people are putting out content, and it keeps them relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, granted, they're, they're already marquee people, let's be real. But at the same time, they're out there making sure that their brand, their their passion... Stay in a flow. Exactly, exactly. You, you know, know, because like we were talking recently, and I was like, yo, dude, this Z-Trip stream, and he was doing X, Y, Z, and this was so cool. Now we're talking about Z-Trip. Right, If right. he decided, nah, I'm not going to stream, I'm about this lifestyle and this sure. kind of underground... No, right. no. And... That, that's a huge difference. I think so. I, and, I, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, the other day, luckily because of streaming, I was able to attend the Music Tectonics conference with people from Rolling Stone, the Instagram head of music, oh, people that's the from one, Warner Music. The, the, yeah, the, that's yeah. one you just told me about. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. So definitely these are people around. in real music Dude. industry, like real music industry, the kind of people that make gold records and Grammys happen. All right. Again, the Instagram head of music. We're not talking. You know, Joe and Susie from whatever karaoke bar in Idaho. And they were talking about streaming and they were talking about everything from virtual worlds to the future of streaming to how donations and tips get done. This isn't ending anytime soon. It might end for you if you don't have the type of content to put out. But major artists, I mean, seven years ago when I lived in Chapel Hill, I had an offer on booking Tommy Trash. For two thousand dollars. Now, Tommy Trash for two thousand dollars. That sounds awfully cheap for a dude coming in from Australia, doesn't it? I would say so. It was a live stream. Oh, wow. He would live stream into the club, have a camera of the people there, so he could see us and we could see him. Wow. And it was charging two thousand dollars just for a live stream from his bedroom or studio, right, whatever it right. may be, whatever room he was in, and getting two grand for it. Wow. Well, because he's a good DJ and an even better producer. Right. 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 Wow. It's out there. That's it's crazy. Possibly. That's seven years ago? Seven years That's ago. That's crazy. Seven years That's ago. That's crazy. So where are you at? Yeah. Where am I at? Oh, yeah. Now, who am I? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean you're, you're right. I mean, that, if you could do that seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do it now with off-the-shelf stuff that he talked about, with off-the-shelf stuff that I bought. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. Metallica yeah. was doing a live stream set, a performance that they were doing at different drive-in movies. So you go to a, like a drive-in movie thing, see Metallica, see or see a live stream of Metallica, and they were getting, let me tell you, they were getting caked up wow. for that. Right. So if they're doing that and people are driving their car and paying good money to go to a live stream of, like, you know, obviously on a big drive-in movie right. of Metallica, it's possible for you. It is. I mean, Period. yeah, yeah you, you, you. That's where the industry is going, right. and it's not slowing down. You really have to. You, you really do. have to take yourself out, you know, and especially for the ones who who are kind of bougie about it, if you will, and kind of puff puffing the whole. You know, is it bougie or is it self righteous? You know, I mean, people obviously it's America, so you're entitled to your opinion. No, it's um, Soviet Union. No opinion. <laughs> But, Government I mean, tell you your opinion. I mean, sure. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's a far stretch to to make the assumption that some of the people who are being negative about streaming are coming from the from the standpoint of, well, I don't do that. Or I shouldn't say I don't do that. I, I'm not a performance type of DJ anyway. You know, I'm just your bread and butter, meat and potatoes, whatever. You come in, I'm an entertainer, I do my thing, and I'm pretty sure they're good at it, and they've carved out a nice living from it. There's no, there's no question that if you're that type of DJ, you're in that pigeonhole, that to be a streaming DJ is another another world they're not streaming because they cannot perform at the ability right, for people right. to want to watch them streaming it's true dj yeah and, to, and again no offense i'm right, sure right, right. everyone's made plenty of I mean, money it, but it's yeah it's, it's a different world it's it a different is a landscape. different world and and i will tell you I, mean, I probably don't have as many streams underneath my belt as you do i'm, I'm maybe close but i will tell you the, the the first ones i don't know about you but it was difficult it was mm -hmm. difficult because i think djs by and large 
are are creatures that feed off feedback. Yeah. So when you're looking at a wall or you're looking at a camera or mm -hmm. you're looking at a file cabinet and you can have <laughs> maybe the you have a little chat box yeah, on your exactly. phone. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. You know, yeah, maybe. And you have access to these these dope tracks and you're trying to put a content stream together for, you know, an hour, hour and a half, whatever. Yeah, that's really not that easy. I mean, no, sure. It, you can't you can't look at the demographics, age. Right. Exactly. You can't look at exactly. you can you get no like haptic right. feedback from, right. exactly. from the audience in front of so, you. So so how do you do it? Not to toot my own horn, but you gotta be able to but, flex. No, no, it's not even flexing. But yeah. it, it what what have I been saying for for years? And you've known me. Know your music. Know your music. Know your music, dude. You know, and if you don't know your music and you don't really have the confidence or the skill set, not that it's a different skill set, because. Well, it, being able it, to DJ streaming is is I would say is a different skill set is, because you have to be able yeah. to figure out where to go and how to navigate when you don't have that feedback. Right, you so gotta have it straight in your head. For yeah. in yeah. two parts, you're playing for the audience and you're also playing for yourself because if you're vibing with it and you know it and you know how to get in, get out, things to do, sure, you can perform right. better than if so like you're in the middle of a house set and someone's like. You play Shook Me All Night Long, and you're like, well, I mean, I can, but I've only played the song like four times. Do you know what I mean? Sure. So sure. there is that element uh, to it as well. But yet, streaming, like when you first start, it's not easy. Uh, and it takes time. It takes practice. Yeah. You've got to watch a lot of YouTube videos and do some reading. And honestly, a lot of it just experimenting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's really, and that, that gets you further than anything else. And I can say just with one day mashup. I spent a few years learning about overlays and stinger transitions and green screen stuff and about audio and the how to use a sound card and different video cards. I mean, there is some time and there is some work to it. But the rewards you can get from yeah, it. Yeah, the, the potential is, is yeah. There's no limit. There's no one from a record label telling you, you can't do this or you can't make this kind of track. And you can gain such a following, I mean, Shoot, I saw a DJ make $1,000 in an hour streaming on Twitch. He didn't leave his bedroom and made a grand. You know? Yeah, I still haven't figured that one out, but, you know, that, that's great for them. That's not so bad. But, and, and, it's and, not so bad. Yeah, and, and let me throw a, a little twist on there, because going back to where this thing started and the whole saturation point of everybody doing it, and like I said, there was good content flowing out there, there was bad content flowing out there. And we've been digesting this for, say, eight months. So, obviously, opinions and perceptions have changed. And I, I think one of the perceptions that has kind of grown from this experiment that we're doing with streaming is the fact that... And I know we, we touched a lot on the presentation, the gear that's used to put a polished product together. I'm definitely not throwing that out the window. I think one of the valid perspectives, like I said, that, that we've been digesting this for a while, and, and that's kind of come to the surface is, and I think it still goes hand in hand with having good product, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But one of the perceptions is, is at the end of the day, whether you have 20 followers, 200 followers, 2,000 followers, what have you, I bring this up because I, I think sometimes that's why I've been hesitant about doing streaming, are, I think people are getting really caught up on the visual and the video aspect of it because I think inherently maybe people assume that when you're tuning into a stream that you're going to sit there for an hour <laughs> and 90 minutes watch. right, and yeah. just watch. So obviously in that scenario, you want to have a good presentation and good graphics and lights and but what have you. But it's typically not even how but it works. You're right, so exactly. So have your stream on, That's check Facebook, point. check That's your email, maybe have it on a TV and be listening That's or the like point. look over exactly. like when you're maybe beat juggling something they'll watch you exactly beat juggling exactly i think that, that that that's the point and to that point it's more important in in, in the grand scheme of things to have, and i think you 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 dave touched on that is to have your audio side and your music programming yep. straight have that locked down and not so much make the video and the visual aspect secondary but if you really want to make an impact and you really want to put a, put a product out there that people are gonna check for, 
maybe you shouldn't focus so much crazy crazy on having this overlay and green screen well, and, and so can, forth and so on. You can have too much. No, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the other thing is there is such a thing as too much. Right. And even if we go back to just podcasts, you remember John and I had his mix show podcast that he did on Spotify. Oh, that's right. That's right. And that did really well. And there's no visual to that. Right. That's right. just, just audio. Right. right. So your stream is just adding a camera to that. Exactly. I mean, so now not only is someone listening, but they watch watching too. Right. You know, right, you listen right. to radio in your car, right? Right. Right. So yeah, at, at, at the end of the day, content's king, dude. And content's you know, always yeah, king. Content's content king. Content's king. You know, so... And, uh, you know, with that, I mean, there's so many huge doors that can open. Yeah, yeah. If you look at it to a degree, it's just the next evolution because we had... We had radio, and then we had TV, and then we had, I mean, you know, dare yeah. I say, like, your closed circuit sure. TV, where you had, like, your pay-per-view sure, sure. stuff, which sure. you could even look at pay-per-view as an early stream. No, no, you're right. Like you paid you're, for it. You're right. You, know, you paid you're a cover right. charge. Sure. And then from sure. there, then we had the internet, and you could post uh, right. pirate radio or online radio, whatever you want to call it, and then YouTube and things like that, where you could post videos. Right. And now we got streaming. Is... Is that not kind of the I next mean, you, evolution down the chain? I'll be honest, I didn't look at it that way, but you bring up very valid points. I mean, you, 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 you throw those dots and you connect them, it's really easy to chain those dots together. There's, yeah, I mean, you're right. And I, I will kind of pose the question that if we didn't have a pandemic, would streaming be as uh, prevalent? So, you know, you know it's, I as, don't think it will be. As it is now. It wouldn't be as prevalent, but... Cats were still doing that. No, you're right. You know, because I did Monday mashup right. For, right. for years. Right. No, tr yeah, there were people streaming you know, before. Uh, before there, there have been uh, DJs, you know, pandemic, streaming yeah. long before then. Right, exactly. Um, exactly. exactly. This just forced everyone's hand. No doubt. No uh, doubt. You know, no doubt. in that situation. But no doubt. to change gears a, a little bit, with the future, and I'll even talk about things I've done sure. within streaming. Well, we can talk about, like, DJ's vault. We can talk about any of the Twitch broadcasts, but there's so many other doors that are opening. White Panda did a performance on Zoom for uh, UNC Wilmington recently in front of 3,000 people. I don't know how they did it, but they sure. they, they did it. Personally, I played in front of a couple of thousand people on different streaming things. Now, that's a couple of thousand people that can potentially book me. And I didn't have to set up no gear. I didn't have to leave. I didn't have to tear down any gear. I turned on a couple of computers and my mixer and my turntables in my bedroom. Also, virtual worlds are getting huge. Marshmallow, 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 DJed in front of two million, million people in Fortnite. He was in a, in a video game, video game, DJing in front of two million people. Now, when did you get in front of two million people at a wedding show? <laughs> and how much would you pay to get in front of two million people at a wedding show? So recently whether it be streaming within Minecraft, Fortnite, Roblox, those virtual worlds, that's becoming a thing, and that's just hitting the younger audience. Right. Your right. future clients, your future brides, your future uh, that's anything. True. Yeah. Facebook's a target demographic right now is your your retiree boomers. That's not who's going to be hiring you, you know, right now. I've been fortunate enough to be able to DJ in one of these virtual worlds, uh, shout out Deggy World, because of other things that I had done where we were going to get into that in our little podcast thing sure. later, where just yesterday I was DJing in front of people from Rolling Stone, Sonos, SoundCloud, Tidal, actual music industry people. Now, we can talk about, oh, Dave, how much money did you make? You know, I don't know about you, but DJing a Rolling Stone party in a couple of years from now in L.A. sounds a whole lot better than that $1,200 I lost to doing a wedding show here in Richmond. So all of these are potential people that are seeing me, that I'm in front of, and we can talk about, I, yeah, I'll, I'll admit, I've made some, some money streaming. I've made actually some, some decent money right. streaming. I've gotten paid performances just to come on and perform. Not tips, not donations, not bits on Twitch. Like, cash money, Dave, we're doing this for Insert College here. I've actually done streams for homecomings for colleges from Pennsylvania down to Florida, paid. Like straight up colleges, like we're doing this, here's money, can you perform? Yeah. It also has opened up uh, opportunities where people have reached out to me about you know recording scratches for someone's collaboration and it's 
also allowed me as as a as an artist to be able to network with people honestly are a way higher caliber than me if you can't stream if you're not at the ability as both performer and streamer to be able to do that so take both of those things out the uh, out of the factor those out right and how much did it get cut down oh I mean there are a lot of great yeah. DJs out there that you're can't right. stream won't stream you're right. so you're right. they're already off the table then there are a lot of DJs that can stream but they can't perform to the right caliber they're now out. So if you're in that niche where you can you can DJ exactly. at a really well level, like my buddy Aiden Scott. Aiden's been killing it. Like that dude has been crushing it, like AM style, cool Twitch stuff, green screen, green screen records, you name it. And he's developed a huge following on Twitch. I think right. he's got like 2,000 followers, wow. making good money, sure. working with a ton of people, throwing digital festivals. I've played on some digital festivals where I've gotten to perform with uh, DMC guys, Red Bull 3 style guys. A couple of these kind of cats. Exactly. Um, top tier level producers. And that's just going to create more opportunity in the future because a lot of the digital festivals I've been able to play at were actual real festivals. Well, getting on stage in front of 3,000 people, and we can talk about what a festival pays. Sure. Or, you know, a, a college homecoming or a campus concert. Right. When now it's, it's digital. What's going to happen in a couple of years right. or next year, year after, when we can go back to having that 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 person show at insert any major college in the country, uh, major nightclubs, it's it's there. Right. I have done it. You know, exactly. I know it's there. Exactly. I've seen it. Yeah. I've talked exactly. to other people that are doing the exact same thing. You know, EDC, um, Insomniac that puts on EDC has been doing... Oh, weekly streams with literally some of the biggest names in the country with full-on festival style production with the lasers and led walls and movers and we have one of those coming up oh, that we're doing right. for my birthday and not like to be so two weeks. so plugging but yeah not yet know, not to be self plugging no, but, but you know, it's I, I'm, I'm, it's a full-on lighting rig i'm glad and you brought people want to watch that yeah I'm, I'm 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 glad you brought that up and it's, it's not because we want to publicize it it's 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 how it came about, mm -hmm. you know. Th that's what I want to talk about. It's how we, yeah, we've we've all been like I said for the past eight months. A lot of us have been like, oh my god, I just want to spin. I want to get a little taste back to what we did and what we used to do. <laughs> I need to get hit. <laughs> yeah, exactly, kind of thing. And I know Dave, like I said, you know, it, it you've touched on it in the past few minutes. What you've been talking about of the whole network aspect of doing these type of events that you're throwing out seeds, you're throwing out breadcrumbs, and sooner or later, something's going to hit. I mean, there's, there's no question about it, because again, you, you, you got to be in it to win it kind of thing. So, I mean, I know the event that we're talking about really kind of came up organically. We're in Virginia, and, and we have a lot of obstacles still. Yeah, this ain't Miami. Yeah, exactly. It's not Atlanta. It's not yeah, Nashville. Yeah, you know, it's not wherever that everybody's trying to force to get open and not to make it a political thing, but we all have now constructs that we have to adhere to. And within that sandbox, if you will, it's like, okay, you gave me these freaking lemons. What freaking lemonade can I make from this? Oh, we making margaritas, bro. Exactly. We making margaritas. Exactly. And I know a lot of that is from you and from. It's funny that we know the same people, but nonetheless, <laughs> you contacted certain people that that really facilitated the ability to be like, you know what? Yeah, let's do this event. Let's do something different. And it may be nothing more than, you know what, we, we ain't been doing nothing for six months. So we got a warehouse. And we, we got these lights in exactly. the cases. We you haven't know, thrown any shows. Exactly. You think you can make a couple of bucks? Right. Like, you know, split the difference with us, you know, whatever you make, we'll right. take half as right. long as we can cover expenses. Right. So I mean, you know, and, in, in, yeah. instead of instead of even waiting for an opportunity to come you create the making opportunity. The yeah. opportunity. Yeah. And Absolutely. that's that's the biggest thing with streaming that I can say is it's it's a two parter. It's one putting yourself out there and being ready and willing and confident enough to be able to do. And then the other side is the networking and where that can then take you. So if you can mix those two things together, that makes money. Sure. Oh no. There's, Period. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and you, 
you said it. I mean, you you as a as a DJ have to stay relevant. You have to be able to fit in that new path, in that new niche. You know, I mean, let, let's be real. Streaming is kind of niche when you sit down and, and look at it. I mean, it, it's it's kind of its own little thing. And yes, it can be very daunting. It can be, it, it can be very over the top in the sense of you can buy all this gear and all these computers and you, know, you can do crazy, crazy production or even go gorilla style and use your phone and a GoPro and then just go for it. So, I mean, obviously you can run that whole gambit, but, and we've said it, at the end of the day, you got to do, you have to be able to do something to merit the investment that you're making. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's not just, it is as simple as just setting up a camera and going to your, to your Comcast account and going www, whatever, restream and boom. I'm up. Hey, I'm on the internet. But then what do you do? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you know, it, it, it has to be a little more than that. And I think the DJs that have been able to figure it out, however cheesy or however... From cheesy to swag. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And that almost doesn't matter. The yeah. fact of the matter is you got to wake up <laughs> to the realization now, even if it's short term, we're still talking a year and a half, maybe two flipping years out. And here's the other the other aspect. Let's say you're doing a bunch of streams. You know, like Mike Walter's been doing all of those mix series of different themes, everything from Prince to Weed. Gotcha. You know, again, sorry. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't care. We're in Virginia. <laughs> we got decrim. So he's been putting out all those the different themes. Right. And let's say I was doing the same thing with streaming. And now you know, I've got multiple you know, festival streams. Sure that I've done. I had a, a bride and groom the other day reach out to me and they're about my age, asking about is there anywhere where I can listen to a mix or see what you do, you got video from something. And I was like, well, typically I don't record video at a wedding because they got a videographer there, so I'm not gonna be stepping on toes. But I've got these sets from different streams right. that I've done and I sent them to them and next thing I know, minutes later, I'm getting a call, bro, that was sick. Like, can we do this, 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 and this at my wedding? And what remix was that? Right, right. Well, okay. that's all just creating more material that you can send out to someone for booking you Absolutely. for whatever your rate right. may be. And then now that you know and are able to stream, let's say they want to stream their ceremony. You can do that too. Right. And that's just another upsell, just like your uplighting, bistro lighting, or your stupid rustic facade. <laughs> am, I, am I right or am I right? You are right. Um, you are right. So yeah, it's, it's just another tool in your arsenal that you need if you would like to you can learn you should learn just like some turntablism just like mixing just like your emceeing all of these things come together and like when you were talking about the streaming earlier we're kind of borrowing that from the gaming or the video game like the pro no, no, gamer right, community right the technics 1200 came from the audiophile community dmx lighting came from theaters there's not a single thing in the dj community that's originally ours everything we've taken from someone else this is just another one of those things. Yeah. That's and, it. And yeah, you're spot on, man. To beat the drum again, I really think in the short term, if you want to call it, or even, like I said, a, a two-year window, I mean, I mean, you, you might as well start thinking that way. At some level, you need to at least address it, <laughs> and you need to kind of embrace it. And be honest you know. with yourself. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the biggest thing. Be yeah. honest with yourself. If you don't think you're one of those, those cats that can... Well, maybe figure out a way to. Or no, no, absolutely. Figure out absolutely. what is your lane because there's so much stuff out there. You know, Randy Bartlett does his a minute with Randy Bartlett. Sure. That's typically like eight minutes. Right. He could be live streaming that, talking about something, and that's there. You can, there, you know, even on Twitch, there's just chatting. The more you can put yourself out there, the more people are going to see you, the more you can stay relevant, the more of a wider audience that could potentially book you that's out there. And then you can also hawk your merch, ask for donations, <laughs> you name it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, then that, that's a whole other aspect of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's there th there's no question that in the very near future, if I had to make a prediction, a, a switch is flipped and we get back to normal, whatever that is. Obviously, I think streaming is going to subside to a degree. But now that it's out there, I don't think it's going away. You can't pay, put it back yeah, in exactly. Pandora's box. It's, it's, you can sit here and be that DJ that streams whatever once a week, once a month, and 
it is what it is and then when we get back to normal you go back into the real world and you leave your streaming aside so be it but it, it is going to be part of the dj landscape well it's you know? is it any different from the guys that didn't want to use a computer because they didn't trust Serato and they only trusted their records. I mean, and then we can keep sure. on going down that chain and just like us talking about, you know, using having our music on a hard drive versus trusting being able to stream it. It's it's just another one of those. It's yeah, it's I mean, there. It, it's not going away. It is, yeah. It is a, a technology, and it, it's funny that you bring it up. We should use that and uh, topic, our, yeah, about <laughs> about tech. I mean, and the DJ, I think, community industry. Most people that are in it are kind of geeks and very tech savvy and by and large, I mean, but then again, we're creatures of habit, you know, Mm -hmm. so it's like, you're right. Where's that balance of, I grew up using records, whatever, using CDs, and now you got me using controllers that don't even use laptops anymore. You know, they have hard drives built in and so forth and so on. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's always going to be that balance and, and yeah yeah we're not sitting here saying that every dj needs needs to stream but i think you do have to acknowledge that it's part of the landscape yeah i mean there's there's just i mean it's I, not I, going I, away it's not it's, it's not, now that it's you know, here it's, yeah. it's here and it's gonna stay here exactly. to the degree it stays here we don't know right exactly but exactly it's not gonna stop tomorrow nope because you know yeah karaoke dave out in idaho exactly you know doesn't believe in it it's it's here yeah it's, and i hate to break it to you right but, and it's not going anywhere right it's your choice whether or not you want to use it to your advantage and there's there, I mean, the doors that have opened for me within my exactly. dj career exactly i literally can't begin to describe because of just the ability to stream that's that I mean, that's it it's been just that in yeah, itself has been a huge game changer exactly so exactly. you know i'm lucky i'm fortunate um but it's been work i mean it to learn all this stuff and get things set and right and be comfortable with it, uh, it took time. Absolutely. You know, just like you MC workshops. Right. They're not fun. They're uncomfortable. You work on a lot of stuff, but you come out of it better. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing, you know, the juice is worth the squeeze. It can be, yeah. You've got to ask yourself how much you're willing to squeeze. Exactly. And and how much work you got to put in to, to get to the point where you can squeeze it. I but, mean, yeah, you know, I can no say doubt. 100% without a doubt, everything I bought for streaming... Not only is it paid for itself, it's made me money. There you go. There period. You go. Cross the board. Right. right. Everything I have streaming related, period. Not only is it paid for itself, it's made me money and opened up doors and opportunities. It's just another thing in the arsenal. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be there. So on that note, I think, uh, yeah, we're, yeah, we're at a point where we can say goodbye. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much to my man Duke for giving us the insight. The legend um, right here. I appreciate that. And uh, again, thanks to Jim and DJ Times. Um, oh. Sorry we don't see you this time. In, yeah. uh, this would be a great in, hallway in talk. AC. Yeah, it would be. And uh, But we'll definitely see you next year. Make sure you catch Dave when he's not in conference mode. <laughs> You'll know what I'm talking about when you see him. Yeah. Um, thanks again. And uh, we will see you in AC, and we'll see you around, you know, the internet. <laughs> Next Hit year us in up. AC. Exactly. Hit us up, Facebook, IG, you know the drill. Thanks so much. Thank you, DJ Toms. Actually, Tony, what's your, what's your Instagram real quick? It's Where can actually, people find you? It's actually DJ Tony TF. I'm at Duke DJ, and you can find us both on Facebook. I'm David Sporn, and this is Tony Fernandez. There you go. You know how to spell Fernandez. You know, yeah, if not, find like a Spanish a, friend. Exactly. So... Yeah, guys, thank you. See you around. Keep them spinning.